So Dravo, Ni Hao, Kia Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts and today I'm going to make a rocket stove out of mortar mix and lava rock. Yes, that is what I want to see. I had a comment that suggested that I use lava rock as an insulator instead of perlite. So I thought I'd give that a try. I'm going to use this rocket stove to replace the flue pipe rocket stove that I was going to use to power my pizza oven. It has never quite worked right. And I think the reason is that the riser is just too tall. My goal was for the fire to reach up into the pizza oven and go across the top of the pizza, kind of like a broiler, and then out the chimney. But the fire just doesn't reach the top. So I'm gonna demo this and hopefully not destroy the flue pipe. And I'll be salvaging the fire brick there to use for the firebox for the mortar mix and lava rock rocket stove. But I'm also going to raise this up a little bit. Uh, I've got some concrete blocks I'm gonna use. Raise it up a couple feet one and a half to two feet so I can make that riser a lot shorter and hopefully get that fire moving across the top of the oven. I am excited to get started on this again. I also need to finish out the tile on the front here to give this a decorative finish. The roof of the oven is a layer of rebar and ideally that was gonna absorb heat and then reflect it back down to the pizza. All right, I'm gonna start by taking this apart. That came apart very nicely, easier than I thought it would. And I'm glad, actually there was still some mineral wool left in here from that ill-fated part of this. Started out with mineral wool as insulation, not realizing that it shouldn't be used with food. So I took it out, thinking I'd gotten it all out, but there was a little bit left, so maybe it's a good thing I didn't ever make pizza on this. And the flue pipe is intact, so I'll be able to use it for something else. The flue pipe was just not made for high temperature. It's vitrified, so it's more like glass than a high-fired pottery or ceramic. So even though I had the fire brick as the, the firebox, which are insulated, there was still too much temperature coming up that chimney. So not only was it too short, but if I had fired it hot like I wanted, it would probably have just disintegrated. I'm gonna leave this solid base here in place, and I've got two more blocks of concrete that I'm gonna put on top if I need both of them. Let me go grab those. I threw together some quick forms when I saw them doing a concrete clean out across the street at the construction site. With, with permission, I grabbed that wasted concrete and, and made some blocks. So I'm going to pull these out of the forms and take them up to the stove. I'm going to start by putting in the big block, which is a beast by the way. I'm out of breath carrying it up the hill. But I'm going to put a layer of Georgia clay between the existing concrete base and this one to help tie it together and level it out. It's close enough because I'm going to add the other block and I'll make sure that's just level. a nice stable base. All right, so the next step is gonna be building the firebox on top of my new base. And I wanted to show you the fire brick rocket stove that I've made. It's actually probably one of my favorites just because fire brick are designed for this purpose to be next to fire. So as compared to concrete, which isn't designed to be under those high temperatures, it works. And it, if you have insulation and armature, you can pull it off. I'm gonna build the new firebox for the pizza oven rocket stove in a very similar fashion to this one. Although I'm gonna go vertical with that first set of brick. I'm also gonna size it so my ashtray, which fits all of these stoves, will fit as well. One quick note on this stove, I added an air tube, which is some conduit that goes out the back of the stove and if I were to do this again I would leave that out 
there's very little secondary air that comes through that and it's not worth the effort the extra effort and time and complication that it added to that project. It's probably the easiest rocket stove to build. Plus, because the bricks are already cured, you got no cure time. You can use it immediately day one, which is a nice thing. I'm gonna chip the old mortar off these bricks before I start with the firebox. I'm one large fire brick too short, but a thin one will, will suffice just fine. I'm gonna use stove mortar to attach these to the concrete. I'm using some pre-mixed mortar on this, the small top of this. I'll be using the dry mix though for the riser with the lava rock. Stuff is rated for 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna go with the thin brick on the back here just because my concrete piece there is not quite deep enough for the full fire brick and then I can make adjustments. The second layer will overhang a little bit. Working with a little bit of angle here from top to bottom so make it a little thicker on this end so I can level that out. Trains here. Just wanted to squish down a little bit. So I'm gonna use this slate chip. Kind of act as a spacer. See how that works. There we go. Can use my other piece of slate as a spacer back here. All right, now I'm going to butter the top of this row to set in my grill. So I'm a little thicker with this because I want a good seat. but I do need to be mindful of how much mortar I've got left. I think I've got enough. Famous last words. So this particular grill I'm not cutting. It is the other half of the grill grate that I took out when I put my rocket stove in my grill. I'll put a link to that video if you're curious what that turned out like. And I had a comment recently that suggested that I not cut the grill, let it stick out the side and then I could use it as a shelf. And actually I think that's a great idea for a a firewood shelf beside the stove. So I'm actually gonna leave this here and put on some kind of a bracket here that will let me stack a bunch of wood right here in order to have it in place. Also keep it off the ground. All right, with my grill in place, I'm gonna start in with the next layer of brick. I am running out of mortar. Empty. The connection between these bricks is important. So I'm actually gonna mix up a little bit of my dry mix so I can get this done right. The directions say just add enough water to make it workable. So I'm gonna be careful with this. It's still a little dry. Ooh. So easy to go from a little dry to too wet. And I've done that. Let me put it in just a little bit more dry. See if I can't tighten this up a little bit. I don't want to go too far in the other direction and have to add more water. Then I'll just be in that cycle. All right, I think this is good.
that seating really nicely and I got just a little squeeze out back here on those to tell me that I got a good seal there. All right, now that I've got the firebox in place, I'm going to level the oven and then we'll get a measurement here. To make this thing easier to move, I'm gonna pull off the hearth, which weighs probably as much as the whole oven. Much better. About 11 and an eighth. I'm gonna leave a little air on this because I wanna be able to seal it with clay in case I need to disassemble it or replace any of the parts. The outside of my form is gonna be a section of this salvaged sewer pipe, eight inch in diameter, which is a perfect fit to sit on top of that firebox. I'm gonna cut an 11 inch section off of this. Pretty straight cut. Kind of proud of that. Maybe the first time that's happened. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna clean up this mess carefully. Put it in the trash bin. This board is not 100% flat. So I'm actually gonna get something that I know is flat, which is this this leftover piece of silestone quartz countertop. It's also pretty beefy. That's a nice fit. The inside of my form is gonna be made out of a four x four wrapped in cardboard. And my armature is gonna be made from some wire fence. Before I assemble though, I'm gonna test fit the pipe on the firebox and then determine what size my cutout needs to be for the thin fire brick. I've got the brick where I want it and I'm gonna mark the pipe and then estimate how far I need to cut into it. Now I'm gonna prepare my armature. Front ones are turned up a little bit more to give clearance to the brick. But I need to make sure I have enough room for my 4x4. Four four. All right, looks good. I'm gonna wrap my 4x4 four four in the cardboard. This is the factory edge, I'll use that on the bottom. To cast this, I'm going to line my pipe with a trash bag, actually two. That'll act as my release layer on the outside. This will probably leave some texture on the outside of the pour, but I think that'd be pretty cool. Let's set my armature in. And then my Four by four. This is not leaving me a lot of room for lava rock. We'll have to see how this goes. All right, now I'm gonna mix. Directions recommend wearing a dust mask. I'm gonna start by adding some lava rock first.
And now I'm gonna backfill the lava rock with mortar. I'm gonna vibrate that to settle it down. It's covered nicely. I'm gonna add more lava rock. This mortar will stay usable for about an hour per batch. So as long as I can get my pour completed in an hour, I shouldn't have any layering issues. Let's see if I can get the water right this time. I believe I've done it. Yeah. Well. The, the top three inches of this, I've been packing with a lot more of the lava rock. And what I think I probably could have done is done more of that in the bottom. It'll be interesting to see if there's a difference in consistency from top to bottom. I am out of mortar mix. And I think if I had done more rock and less mortar, um, I would have had enough. So what I'm gonna do is add, uh, mix in some Portland cement with a little bit of mortar mix that I have left, enough that I can make one more batch. And I'm gonna mix it much wetter, much more like a slurry, uh, so they can really connect with those lava rocks and kind of really bind them together. That's my theory, let's see if it works. All right, I've got my Portland. Let's mix it with some water, and then we'll top this off. All right, I got the Portland mixed up like a slurry. The directions on the fireplace mortar say to let it air dry for 24 hours before uh, you apply heat, which is how it's cured. Since I've added concrete to this setup, I'm going to let it cure for a little bit longer. So, now we wait. Or I wait. You don't have to wait because I'm going to cut right to the next shot. So it's the next morning and I'm dying to see what this looks like. And I, th I think it's cured enough that I can unform it and uh, just see how the mortar mix and the last little bit of uh, Portland cement bonded with the, the lava rock. Let's take a look. There's a good chance this could be a complete failure. I can feel it sliding out of the form. Definitely an interesting texture on the outside. Ooh, a loose lava rock. Yeah, there are definitely some gaps in this. Some exposed sections of lava rock here where that, whatever I was pouring was just too thick to get down in. Worst case scenario, I can just skim coat the outside with some Portland since that will be uh, the furthest from the heat that might work although I think if I had gone full slurry 
on this with the lava rock all the way kind of compacted in that might have been a better option all the way down but let's complete this unforming all right we have some definite flaws in this concept a couple of big holes Ooh, a massive one right here you definitely see there's some layering happening here between lava rock layers and mortar layers and they are not connecting this mortar was just too thick my armature held up the lava rock here from getting all the way to the bottom and uh, the mortar then stopped there as well so I think with a really really runny slurry and a better job of packing the lava rock in, I think and that would have been a better way to do this. But the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna use a release agent on the form, and I'm actually gonna cut the form in half so I can tape it back together, do my pour, and then just untape it, open the form up, and then it'll come out and it'll be a lot more smooth as well. I'm going to patch this thing up with the lava rock and some Portland cement and then try it on the rocket stove. I am gonna add some sand to my Portland just so we get the proper concrete here when we add the lava rock. Got the Portland in the bottom here. I'm just gonna mix this by hand while it's dry. I've got my rubber glove on because I'm gonna actually use that to pack the concrete in by hand. Before I do that, I'm gonna put in some lava rock in here because I want that insulator right down there against the fire, especially where I can see the cardboard. Here where my lava rock really stayed in there, I'm just gonna cover it with the cement. I'm not able to get the 4x4 four four back in, just the, it's kind of squeezed in on that. So I'm actually going to use a 2x4, which I can get in there, and then I'm going to shim it. Where I'm right up against the cardboard, I'm going to put down a layer of the concrete first before I press some of the lava rock into that. You can also see the remnants of my brick ledge here <laughs> uh, where it was going to sit on that, that brick. So I'm going to try and form that in here while I'm doing this. I also don't know if this stuff's just gonna flake right off when it gets hot. I know there are some concrete pros who watch this channel. So maybe some advice for me for the next time I try this. My four x four got offset too. 
in the form. And I think next time I'll definitely screw that down to a board so that it stays in the center. All right, I'm gonna let this cure just a little bit and then I'm gonna fire it because you know what? I don't care if it cracks, I don't care if it breaks down. I just wanna see how it does. So I've let my riser cure here for a couple of days and that'll at least give me an airflow test on the firebox. So stay tuned for part two where I rebuild the riser and hopefully it'll turn out like I planned the second time around. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and test with this and see if we can get some airflow through the oven from the rocket stove. I'm actually just gonna leave this cardboard sleeve in place and burn it out. That'll be fun. To make it easier to install the riser, I'm going to raise up the oven just a little bit, put it in place, and I'll lower it back down. To make my temporary connections for the riser, I'm going to just use some Georgia clay. Yeah, I know what this looks like. So the opening into my oven is a little bit bigger than the top of this riser. So I'll have to fill that in. But before I lower it down on to the top of the riser, I'm gonna put another ring of Georgia clay here. From the underside, you can see that there's still a bit of a gap between the top of the riser and the opening to the pizza oven and I'm going to fill that with Georgia clay as well. For being nothing more than mud, this stuff does a pretty good job of sealing. Alright, so my connections are complete. Everything looks like it's good to go. I'm going to just pull out the ashtray here, get the debris out of it and then Now let's light it up. Not fully drafting just yet, I think because that cardboard is clogging up the riser. Oh. Hey, that's the cardboard going up there. But I like the look of that. I like the fact that the fire is reaching the top of the chimney and rolling toward the front of the oven. And the cardboard's done. I'm gonna let this go out and then clear any ash from the cardboard and then relight it. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna fire this thing up again and see how hot I can get it. I'm gonna break these off a little bit shorter, keep the fire in the back. Nice draw. Let's go check the front of the oven. Oh. Yes. That is what I wanna see. Let's get a temperature on that. It's 
like seven, eight sixty, eight fifty. That's what I envisioned when I made this the first time. Fire rolling up the back, rolling across this rebar, heating at the top of the oven. Nothing but a heat plume coming out the top. It's a little bit ashy inside. I'm gonna put the door in the front and see if I can get the heat up. I switched to some larger pieces of wood for a slower burn. I think that'll produce less ash as well. Also burn longer. Fire temperature is 900 degrees. Let's check the riser. One sixty nine. So the lava rock and the fireplace mortar are keeping that temperature down. That's great. Or rather they're keeping the heat in. Keeping the heat going up the riser instead of radiating it out through it. And let the oven heat up for another fifteen minutes or so. See how hot we are inside. Six ninety five. Floor of the oven is three seventy. The roof of the oven is six nineteen. I'm not getting the temperatures you'd get in a in a big dome brick oven. This is not a, a traditional Italian brick pizza oven. Not making that claim. But I wanted to see if I could create one that would be able to be fired with a rocket stove. And in that sense I think this has been successful. I may even leave the riser as it is because I don't feel like there's any performance issues. My one question mark is the ash on the floor of the oven. I don't want ash on the top of my pizza. And I think what might be happening is when I have the door on, the airflow comes into the body of the oven and it slows down just because we don't have that continuous cross section. And then it speeds up again as it goes out the chimney that allows that ash to settle. So what I might do is just when I'm making pizza, heat the oven up first and then put the pizza in and leave the door off. Maybe that would allow the airflow to continue out the front of the oven. We'll have to just see. I added some fire down to the bottom of the firebox in the ashtray to get some extra heat. Just wanted to see if that would affect the airflow or not. It seems to be doing just fine. I do think it's better going with the round wood, the oak, versus the split pine, especially when it's thicker like you see in there now, it tends to slow the burn down just because of surface area. It just takes up a lot of space and blocks air. The round sticks just burn faster. Of course, that means you have to tend the fire all the more. But isn't that why we do this, right? To play with fire? All right, so in spite of the uh, not so successful casting uh, with the lava rock and the mortar, this thing seems to be performing pretty well. I'm very pleased. I might not even make another one. <laughs> um, I've got those materials coming. I might have to use those for another project. Thanks for sticking around on this series. It's taken me probably five videos to get this pizza oven to where it is. Part of it here on this channel is the process. They're definitely projects I get to from prototype to actionable more quickly and some that take a few iterations, a few steps to make it work. And and some just never work like I'd intended or thought they might. So I'm hoping that's part of the reason that you watch the videos that I make is I'm gonna show you when things don't work like they should or don't work like I think they will or are complete failures. My hope in showing you the pluses and the minuses is that it helps you when you make your projects to maybe avoid some of the mistakes that I make along the way. Now that I'm happy with how this is performing within the parameters that I think it's going to, um, I'm going to try and make another pizza. I also need to do the tile surround and, and make a proper door for this oven so that it looks a little bit nicer. I'll do that in the upcoming video as well. 
I'm also going to have my friend Chad at, over at the Man Crafting Channel make me a metal door on his plasma cutter. So that should be a cool video to watch over on that channel, so keep an eye out for that. Ooh, that's hot. It's kicking out some heat there. Thanks to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you're interested in getting a little bit more content about how my backyard system works, you can join me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. That helps to support the creation of this content. And um, of course, it's no requirement to do that. They're always gonna be free here on YouTube to watch. So thank you so much for watching and all the great comments and suggestions. And my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. Check out the hoarder video that's gonna be on this Wednesday. And I'll see you here on the edited video next Saturday. Thanks for watching. Yes, that is what I wanna see.